Good morning, church. Good to see you. Thank you for your faithfulness last week. And it's hard for me to preach after we have someone that was that good from last week. So thank you for being here. I'm Clarence St. John, the interim pastor here. And we're, uh, we're excited about missions. I got my missions check ready for a little box back there. But um, we're a missionary church, and so thank you for being concerned about the missions all over the world. <clears throat> if you're like me, and I know I am, <laughs> then uh, you don't like to wait. Does anyone like to wait? I can't identify with you. I don't like waiting. Um, I, I can't even hardly make it through a stop sign when I, when I, when I take my physical. This is this is honest truth. When I when I go in for my physical every year, I get there a half hour early, and take a nap in the parking lot because if I come right from the traffic, my blood pressure is higher. <laughs> and if I if I sit at a stoplight, my goodness. The record is three minutes and two seconds. I, I just, uh, I have to time the stoplight so I don't have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> when I was in school, I was kind of like this boy on this little video. Man, is this day ever going to end? Time is moving so slow. Seriously, it's taken like 10 minutes for the clock to move forward two seconds. Good grief, did the clock stop working or something? Who forgot to put new batteries in the clock? That person should be fired. Ugh, look at my teacher. She's perfectly happy to keep me here, stuck at my desk forever. How is it that it isn't time to go yet? I've been sitting here for like eight hours. It's time to go. Ring, bell, ring. Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes, and when I open them, it's gonna be time to go. Ugh, I'm losing my mind. This is crazy. This clock has got to be broken or something. Oh man, almost there. In five, four, three, two, one. Rise and shine, Dylan. It's time to get ready for school. No! He thought school was over. Focus. Perhaps some of you can identify with that idea of waiting. Waiting is um, imp for things that are uh, impossible to believe that could ever happen. We've been waiting for the things to open up. We've been waiting for things to return to normal. I don't know what normal is anymore, but um, here at Summit, we've been waiting for a year to find uh, our new pastor and who it's going to be and when it's going to happen. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about um, two words that um, a lot of you have heard, holding pattern. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I guess there's a holding pattern that uh, we are in as a church. And I just want to say a few things about the holding pattern. Our search committee is doing a wonderful job, and we are evaluating right now all of our all of the people that have come our way, those that, there, there's, there are two piles, those that want us and those that we want. <laughs> there's a difference. How many know that? Some people we want to go after, some people want to come after us. So the committee's trying to figure that out and how that's going to work. And so um, we are beginning the process of what's best for Summit. And so thank you for being fa fa patient with us. We're in a holding pattern but we're trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And um, the Holy Spirit is the uh, control tower that we're trying to listen to. So here we go. 
I'm guessing um, all of us know what, what a holding pattern is. I'll, I'll give you the definition in case you don't know. A course flown by the aircraft while waiting for the perm permission to land. A state of waiting and suspending activities or process. That's a pretty good description, and that's what we're in right now as a church. If you've ever flown any place, um, you've been up in, up in the air, and you're flying somewhere, you're getting ready to land, you look out the window and you realize this is the second time, this is the third time, this is the fourth time I've seen those buildings. And um, don't pull your hair out because uh, you're gonna land here pretty soon. Your plane is on a holding pattern, circling the airport, wondering what's going on next and uh, unable to land because unfavorable gr ground conditions. Sometimes it's uh, things that are common, sometimes it's the weather, sometimes it's other airlines that are um, <coughs> coming and going. At a certain point, the pilot says, we're in a holding pattern. Now, he doesn't say that <coughs> until about the fourth or fifth time. Uh, we could have told him <coughs> what we're in, but they do tell us, <coughs> and they're waiting for the control tower to <coughs> give them a signal. It happens so often that planes are required to have enough fuel to keep going around and around and around. Now, I'm not in that habit for my own car. This week, I filled up one of my cars, and it took 20 and a half gallons. The next day I filled up the other car, it took 19 and a half gallons. I did make it to the gas station, but my wife, she can't stand that rhythm that I have. But I like to, <clears throat> I like to get the gas tank empty before I fill it up again. But, uh, so <laughs> it, happens, <clears throat> it happens often that planes are required to have extra fuel because they want to they don't want to do like I do because they, they're responsible for a lot of people. But th <clears throat> they carry enough fuel to make uh, that, those extra rounds. Now let me draw an, al an al al analogy uh, for this situation. <clears throat> if, you've been, if you've been here long enough, I've talked to you, we've dealt with some of the issues of what, what's going on and the thought of is that where this church wa is, whether we're on course for what we're supposed to do. But now we have to circle back around again and find ourselves back to square one. And um, thank you very much. <clears throat> no, I'm not, I don't want to embarrass you or anything, but when I go to a new place, they bring me cough drops, throat lounges, water. <laughs> and they say, I hope your voice gets better. <laughs> I said, if my voice gets any better, it won't be my voice. But thank you, you're very kind. If I would drink that, I probably couldn't make it through the rest of the service. So <laughs> we, have to, we have to kind of decide. I'm set for this afternoon. <laughs> wow, anyone else got something for me? <laughs> no, aren't, aren't God's people gracious and wonderful? And, uh, and so we're in, a waiting period. we're in a waiting pattern right now here at Summit. The control tower is telling us when and where it's time to move ahead. The good news is, got good news for you, we have enough fuel to make it <clears throat> because we're plugged into this book. We have enough fuel to make it, and we're going to see how God is going to help us. Uh, our search committee is amazing in all the ways that they're helping us. I came across this quote, and I want to share it with you. When God puts you <clears throat> in a holding pattern, it's not just a question of having enough fa faith to receive the promise. It also matters that we have enough spiritual staying power to stay airborne until it comes to pass. Stay with us, keep airborne, we're gonna make it. That's why <clears throat> you need to carry enough spiritual fuel, fuel, fuel to handle the delays and the waits, wait for the clearance. I don't like delays. 
holding pattern mean there's a delay and uh, there's a, a wait involved. Waiting is difficult for all of us. But God's holding pattern always has a plan. God's in a plan. We, we don't like his plan because it's not in our timing. But he has a plan, he has a purpose, and he has a process. And we are in that right now. And um, unfortunately for you, I'm used to this because this happens every church I go to. <laughs> When are we going to get ready? No, when are we going to get our new pastor, you know? And so um, the best news is the shortest one I had was four months. The bad news is the longest one I had is 14 months. And we're going to be way before that in this pattern. Scripture is filled with illustrations of individuals who found themselves <clears throat> in one of God's holding patterns. Uh, on more than one occasion, here's what Jesus said. My hour or my time has not yet come. Jesus had his holding pattern. The, the followers, his disciples were always wondering when and where. And Jesus saying, not yet, don't get ahead of God. But there came a day when Jesus said these words, my hour has come. The process of God's timing Jesus said, my hour has come, set your face toward Jerusalem. In other words, act now. So we got to be ready to act when the Lord is ready to move ahead in our process here at the church. When we find ourselves in a holding pattern, it's important to remember, get this, God is getting you ready for something, and God is getting something ready for you. Uh, you see, God's working on our behalf all the time. And God's timing is just as much a part of his will as the person, the place, the project. And he has you in mind when he's trying to get us ready. During the holding pattern, God shapes us and he shapes the circumstances around us. And uh, what's God trying to shape up in me? What's God trying to shape up in our board? What's God trying to shape up in our search committee? What's God trying to shape up in our church as he gets us ready for what's coming next? The good news is God is working at shaping people up all the time. I just wish he'd, you know, sometimes leave me like I am, but he's not going to. The shape of things is important. My wife, she'll say, um, company's coming. Our house has to be in ship. Shop, ship shape. I wish it was just for company. She says that all the time. And so, uh, one time I was, guys, do you ever forget to tell your wife something? Three of us. <laughs> I'm not going to say the percentage, but the rest could be lying. I don't know for sure. Or else you just don't like to raise your hand. That's okay. But I called home one day and I said, honey, we have a banquet in five minutes. I'll pick you up. She said, I'm in no shape to go to a banquet. So I got to go alone. And uh, I'm glad it wasn't like, you know, a Valentine's banquet or something like that. But <laughs> the truth is we need to be shaped by the Holy Spirit. We like to be in physical shape. Most of you probably are working on something for your physical shape. Vicki and I like to walk a half an hour a day. We make it six or seven days a week most of the time. And um, I try to stay in shape. You know, someone said you're, you're in good shape for the shape you're in. <laughs> Or for your age, I hate that when people do that. But, but I did, before God, I did my 100 push-ups this morning. I do them every other day. Once you start, it's hard to quit, you know. I started this when I, when I quit playing sports back in, the, moved to Minneapolis. I started doing push-ups, and I can still do them. It's like riding a bike, you know, you just... Keep at it. Important of being in good shape, uh, as important as that is, how are you 
in shape spiritually. It's even more important than anything else we do. During a holding pattern, we need to be in shape. The holding patterns provide fertile ground for getting bent out of shape. How many have ever been bent out? You, you don't even know what that means. I know that, so don't raise your hand. But uh, I've been bent out of shape for stuff that don't even matter. I hate that. Um, I have to admit that I've gotten bent out of shape over things that really weren't important. I love what Mark Twain said on this topic. I've been through some terrible things in my life, some which actually happened. <laughs> How many have worried about things that never, yeah, we've been there, haven't we? Uh, so good thing that Mark Twain has some of those things to remind us. Uh, Timothy had some good advice to stay in good spiritual shape. When, he, when we find ourselves in a holding pattern, here's what he urged. Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned, a pattern shaped by the faith and the love that you have in Jesus Christ. The truths that you have in your heart, the truths that you have in your life from God's word, hang on to them because God's word is stable. It never changes. We thank the Lord for that. Um, in a holding pattern, it's hard for us because uh, it's true that God is shaping us and God is shaping the circumstances. And the psalmist put it this way, you get us ready for life. You probe for our soft spots. I hate that. You knock off our rub rough edges. I got a lot of them. I guess the Lord's not finished with me yet. He's still working on me. I said earlier, if you're like me, and I know I am, we need to a lot of shaping, and we need to get a few more rough edges knocked off. Don't raise your hand, but how many have noticed God's knocking off some rough edges from time to time? Um, he, he's, not, he's not finished with us yet. Praise the Lord. Looking back, I see a few preconceived ideas in my life that needed to be changed. I see, see some wrong ways of handling things that I needed to shape up in. I see some theories that I needed to become not a theory but a belief move from my head to my heart and uh, so I could really understand it. Some skills that needed to be honed. God's still working on us some fears that needed to be dealt with. Uh, I want to get the fears out of my life, some steel that needed to be developed in my system, some reinforcements that needed to be added, and there have been some things, good and bad, inside of me that I didn't know about. I just want to say this. You've got some good things inside of you. You don't even know about them yet. That God wants to use our good, and he wants to improve our bad so we can be used for his kingdom. <coughs> I do have that cough drop, don't I? <laughs> Thank you. God does probe at our soft spots. And he has a way of knocking off our rough edges. And believe it or not, he's still working on me. And since you're walking around taking in fresh air and breath. He's working on you. Don't look so surprised. He's, he's working on you. And um, God loves you the way you are, but too good to leave you that way. Should I say that again? God loves you just like you are. He doesn't care anything about your past. Or anything. He cares just like you are, but he's not going to leave you that way because he's always shaping us up. And I praise the Lord for that. So he's at work in us. He's at work in our life. Uh, he sees the good in us. And uh, that is uh, some of the things that he wants to work, use you for. And he also sees the circumstances that would come our way, that the qualities that we have he can use to bring glory to his name. I think about this. Gideon was hiding in fear. God shaped him up to be a mighty man of valor. 
Elisha was plowing in the field. God shaped him up to influence nations. God takes us and he, he improves us. Peter and Andrew were fishermen. God made them, shaped them into fishers of men. Paul was persecuting the church and killing as many Christians as he possibly could. God shaped him into the greatest promoter of the gospel that the world has ever known. David was born a shepherd, but God shaped him into a soldier and a king. Matthew Henry states it like this, his hands had been used to the shepherd's staff and his fingers to the playing of the harp, but God taught his hands to war and his fingers to fight because he designed him to be Israel's champion. He's getting all of us ready for something next on the agenda. It's pretty exciting what God, God's gonna use you for next, but we don't always know what it is, but he does. And he goes on to say what God calls men to, he makes us fit for. God's called me to some pre, um, pretty incredible things. I didn't think I was fit for him, but he made me fit for him. He makes you fit for the things he has next on his agenda for you. David said about how God shaped his life. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trained my hands for war and my fingers for battle. You made me bold and stout-hearted. God shapes us by the situations that we are in and the circumstances that we come up against. And I have discovered that the majority of the shaping seems to occur during the holding pattern. And so God's getting our church ready for something great in the future because we're in a holding pattern right now. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. How many, how many are smarter as you look back than when you look forward? <laughs> Hindsight is amazing, and um, I like it because um, every once in a while I like to look back and see things I goofed up in and how I can do better, but I also like to look back and say, wow, God used us for that. I can't believe it. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. It gives meaning to all sorts of experiences from yesterday. The longer you've been saved, the more you were able to look back and see how God's hand was on your life in many situations. For some of us, it's getting to be a long years since you were saved, a long time. Uh, those of you who have been around the spiritual block a few times, you can say with this little cartoon preacher, you know, I wasn't born again yesterday. <laughs> I don't know who comes up with stuff like that. I suppose it's written on the bottom. Well, because I wasn't born again yesterday, I have a lot of yesterdays to look back on, and I can th see things today I couldn't see yesterday as God has taken our life and he's trying to make us better. Um, looking back, I can, I'm able to make a little more sense out of some of the things that were disappointing and hard as we walk through life, I see how the things that Vicki and I struggled with when God was shaping us and uh, getting us ready for the future. And uh, I now view those excruciating pains we had in the, when the small group tried to come in and bring false doctrine into our church, our little church, and they came in with almost as many people as we had. But God was shaping us up so we could recognize false doctrine. We could recognize people that are trying to ruin us and ruin the kingdom. And I see how he shaped us to handle the, the, the church split. You know, see, Vicki and I, we started four churches on purpose. Uh, we started four churches, two on purpose and two by accident. Some of you don't know what that means, but... Uh, I don't know if you could believe this, but some people actually didn't like me, so they started another church. <laughs> but you know what? God fooled them. He had two pre preaching places ready instead of one. And they actually got people saved that I didn't get saved. So God's bigger than us, isn't he? And we're excited about that. He shaped us to deal with bigger conflicts and we handle these little conflicts. Um, when we were pastoring, we had some unbelievable hard times, suicides, terrible car accidents, shooting, d domestic dis disputes that we couldn't 
figure out how to help. Uh, our fledgling little church was filled with society's outcasts. But when God changed them, they became evangelists for his kingdom. People started to notice that people that come to your church change. If you need to change, you came to the right place because Jesus is changing people out of summit. And he's even changing some Christians to be better. So stick around. We're going to have a good time as God shapes us up and God helps us in the future. God started, God started to help uh, people that were impossible change and become what he wanted them to be. Over the course of God shaping me for ministry, I found myself in many difficult situations. Sometimes I was confident. Sometimes I was insecure. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was bad. Sometimes I was weak. Sometimes I was overwhelmed. Sometimes I stood in awe of what the Almighty God did in spite of me. Because he's always doing bigger things than we can possibly do ourselves. And um, if you say amen very loud, I'll, be pr I'll thank the Lord that you're not talking about me. <laughs> God's doing great things in our life. He wants to do great things through your life and through your ministry. God often shapes us by allowing us to um, experience small doses of things prepared us for the bigger ministry in the future. God is shaping all of us when he trusts us with something hard. <clears throat> How many of you have been trusted with something real hard? When we go through life, some things are terribly hard, real hard. But he trusts you with it because he knows you're going to hang on and you're going to be true to him through the through these situations. So um, <clears throat> we have a choice in the matter. We can become disillusioned, bitter, and sarcastic. Or we can become soft and pliable. The Lord's working on, working on us to make us soft and pliable in his sight. And I don't know about you, but I want to be shaped instead of scarred. Lord, don't let us be scarred. If you're here with some scars, the Lord can heal them today. He can set you free. He can bring you life. God also uh, shapes us up by giving us dreams and dreams for the future. God gives us dreams that need to, that's the seed of something good for the future. And then he, uh, he seems to put us in a, in a holding pattern almost on every dream that we have because he's trying to make us stronger than we were before. Um, it's that holding pattern that often causes us difficulty. Um, Abraham experienced it. God promised him a son. But before Isaac came, he took it into his own hands and ended up birthing an Ishmael. Well, I don't know if I could wait for 25 years either, so I'm not really blaming him, but... It had been prophesied that the birth of Jacob, that he would be the favored one, but he takes it into his own hands and steals the birthright instead of wait for God to do it. Joseph had been given some dreams, but he had unwisely shared them with his brothers at the improper time, and he ended up in a holding pattern in Egypt. And then he remembered his dreams, and God said it things in motion. Moses knew he was spared for a purpose, but he needed 40 years in the backside of the desert to uh, get his all his pattern ready so he could lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 2 we read, Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on the tablets that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time, it hasn't. It hastens toward the goal, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. God has a plan. It's going to happen for summit. We're going to see all these things come together. 
Because this is God's church. This isn't your church. It isn't my church. It's his church. And he's on the move. He knows what he's doing. His timing is perfect. When God charts the course, the, plan, the plane will eventually land. And so I'm excited about that. Uh, we may find ourselves in a holding pattern. We may be circling for a, a while because there are obstacles on the landing strip, but occasionally we find ourselves diverted even to a different um, airport. However, if we wait to safely land, our responsibility is to keep circling, waiting. Heaven's control tower is going to give us direction. Um, I know whereof I speak because one of the hardest things I ever did in my life was the Lord put me on a, the biggest holding pattern of my life, and I was pretty young to be trusted with that. I didn't realize that God was shaping me and shaping the place he was calling me to be, and I felt called. I told you about when God called me to home missions when I was at North Central, I took the, uh, took the map of Minnesota and I took the largest city outside of the metro that, wasn't, um, that didn't have an Assembly of God church and it was Hibbing, Minnesota. God put Hibbing on my heart and I knew that I was supposed to go there so I told everybody who was in charge that I should get, they should get me to Hibbing. And um, I remember when the presbyters were making the final decision on whether I could go to Hibbing or not. And um, I was down in Slayton, and um, I don't know why, it was raining. It seemed like it rains on the worst days. It was raining, and um, I got a letter from the superintendent. I was so excited, I couldn't wait to read it. And the letter said, the board of presbyteries in session, that means God said, <laughs> we are not going to go back to Hibbing. We've been there three times. Uh, there are eight out of ten churches on the Iron Range are on home mission support. Nobody can make it up there. You can't go. I was um, I was so I was so discouraged that I decided if I miss God that much, because because I knew I knew I knew how many of really known and it didn't work. Two of us, three, four of us. Wow, I'm not alone. I knew, I knew that God had called me to Hibbing. My leadership said no. So I was driving back, <clears throat> of course it was raining out, I was driving back to Minneapolis to go back to be a youth pastor which was my second love, not my first love. I was called to plant a church. And so I thought, I'm just gonna dial on the radio. Maybe I can find some gospel music. It won't hurt me any. <laughs> that's a, that's a, if I can find some, it won't hurt me, you know, to hear. That's how low it was. Well, the Revival Time Choir, some of you young people don't even know what that was. We couldn't explain it to you anyway. So it was an old time program. The evangelist C.M. Ward was on the revival time for 25 years, and revival time choir was on when I was just just dialing. I want you to get the picture. I'm I've just been told no. I'm trying to find a way to f deal with this disappointment, and so I'm driving through the part of the country I don't know, dialing just randomly, and I come across. Uh, revival Time Choir. I thought, I'm going to listen to this. C.M. Ward spoke. I have no idea what he spoke on, but I do know this. At the end of the message, he would always say, there's a long altar from coast to coast all across the United States. And the Holy Spirit has impressed on me to pray for some preacher that's contemplating leaving the ministry tonight. Well, I decided before that, that I was going to take my transcript to St. Cloud. I love people. I thought I could make a degree in counseling because I miss God by so much. There's no way that he's going to use me. And so the um, CM Ward said, I am, uh, 
I'm praying for some preacher that's contemplate some young preacher that's contemplating leaving the ministry. And I was so discouraged, I said, there's 500 Assembly of God preachers contemplating leaving the ministry tonight. <laughs> He's not talking to me. You know what the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart? You haven't listened to revival time for six years. This was, this was taped. The Holy Spirit said, I, I didn't know this stuff. I found out later it's true. This thing was taped six weeks ago. You haven't listened for six years. It was taped six weeks ago. Don't you think the Holy Spirit and God knows where you are? I was crying before that. Now I start crying for the other reason that God really knows where I am. He really knows what I'm doing. And to make a, a long story longer, <laughs> within, within 10 months, Vicki and I got married and we're in Hibby. Because God has us in a holding pattern sometimes. And he's getting us ready for the next chapter of our life. And the great chapter for a young pastor was about to unfold in the dream of my life, but it took two and a half years. God has us in a holding pattern here at, at uh, Summit. And before we open the altars, uh, for a time of prayer for some of you, I close with these words from Matthew Henry. God has an appointed time for his appointed work and we'll be, uh, we'll be sure to do the work when the time comes. It is not for us to anticipate his appointed time, but to wait for his time. The promise may seem silent a great while, but at the end it shall speak, and therefore, though it tarry long and longer than expected, yet we must continue waiting for it being assured that it will come and willing to tarry until it does. Though it tarry past our time, and it does not tarry past God's time, which is always the best time. I'd like our prayer team to come. I always like to open the altar if there's one or two that need the Lord to help us. Let's stand together. And while I'm... Um, while they're going to be singing in a moment, our team is coming. You might be in a holding pattern and you don't understand why God is waiting so long. Our team is coming. You may think you miss God on something and you just need someone to help pray through on that situation. And you need someone to stand with you during a moment of loneliness in a time when you feel like you haven't heard from the Lord for a while. I want some more of our prayer team to come and Brother Bill, come on down. And um, God is going to use us for his kingdom. Amen. And so, Jonas, why don't you come too in case some people need some help. Let's worship while we sing. saying yes to you today 
Yes, Lord. We're available for the next step in our journey. Some of us are on a holding pattern. We're worn out. We've been holding for a long time. But thank you for going before us. Thank you that we can say yes to you. Thank you that you're, you have a plan for us that it unfolds every day so we follow you. We have your word to guide us. We have your strength to help us. Guide us, Lord, as we continue to listen to your voice. Those that must go, dismiss us. Those that need to hear from you, deal with us at our seat or at this altar in Jesus' name. <laughs>